Martin Luther's slogan was, Take away the mass, destroy the church. St. Alphonsus said, quote, The devil has always attempted by means of heretics to deprive the world of the mass, making them precursors of the Antichrist, who before anything else will try to abolish and will actually abolish the holy sacrifice of the mass as a punishment for the sins of men, according to the prediction of Daniel, and strength was given him against the continual sacrifice. In this tape we will prove that the Novus Ordo, or New Mass, is not Catholic, is sacrilegious, is scandalous, is blasphemous, and is definitely invalid. The traditional Latin Mass, the most holy act of worship of the Roman Rite of the Catholic Church, was codified by Pope St. Pius V in his Bull Quo Primum in 1570. Pope St. Pius V said in Quo Primum, quote, It shall be unlawful henceforth and forever throughout the Christian world to sing or to read Masses according to any formula other than this missal published by us. Pope St. Pius V went on to say, quote, This present constitution can never be revoked or modified but shall forever remain valid and have the force of law. And if, nevertheless, anyone would ever dare attempt any action contrary to this order of ours, handed down for all times, let him know that he has incurred the wrath of Almighty God and the blessed apostles Peter and Paul. In 1969, Paul VI replaced the traditional Latin Mass in Vatican II churches with his own creation, the New Mass, or Novus Ordo. Since that time, the world has seen the following in the Vatican II churches, which celebrate the New Mass, or Novus Ordo. The world has seen clown masses in which the, quote, priest dresses as a clown in utter mockery of God. The world has seen priests dress as Dracula in football jerseys accompanied by cheerleaders as a cheesehead. There have been disco masses, Gymnastic performances during the new mass, balloon masses, carnival masses, nude masses, at which scantily clad or nude people take part, and we have seen juggling masses at which a juggler performs during the new mass. The world has seen priests celebrate the new mass with Dorito chips, with Mountain Dew, on a cardboard box, with cookies, with Chinese tea accompanied by ancestor worship with a basketball as a priest bounces it all over the altar, with a guitar as the priest plays a solo performance. The world has witnessed the new mass with a priest almost totally nude as he dances around the altar, with priests dressed in native pagan costumes, with a Jewish menorah placed on the altar, with a statue of Buddha on the altar, with nuns making offerings to female goddesses, with lectors and gift bearers dressed up as voodoo Satanists, The world has seen the new mass at which the performer is dressed up in a tuxedo and tells jokes. The world has seen rock concerts at the new mass, guitar and polka new masses, a puppet new mass, a new mass where the people gather around the altar dressed as devils, a new mass where people perform lewd dances to the beat of a steel drum band. The world has seen a new mass where nuns dressed as pagan vestal virgins make pagan offerings. The world has also seen new masses incorporating every false religion. There have been Buddhist new masses, Hindu and Muslim new masses, new masses where Jews and Unitarians offer candles to false gods. There are churches where the entire congregation says the mass with the priest, where the priest sometimes talks to the people instead of saying mass. What we have cataloged is just a tiny sampling of the kind of thing that occurs in every diocese in the world where the new Mass is celebrated, to one degree or another. Our Lord tells us, by their fruits you shall know them. The fruits of the new Mass are incalculably scandalous, sacrilegious, and idolatrous. This is because the new Mass itself is a false, invalid Mass and an abomination. When the new Mass came out in 1969, Cardinals Ottaviani, Bacci, and some other theologians wrote to Paul VI about it. Keep in mind that what they said about the new Mass concerns the Latin version, the quote, most pure version of the new Mass. Their study is popularly known as the Ottaviani Intervention. It states, quote, 
The Novus Ordo, the new order of Mass, represents both as a whole and in its details a striking departure from the Catholic theology of the Mass, as it was formulated in Session 22 of the Council of Trent. They could clearly see that the Latin version of the new Mass was a striking departure from the teaching of the Council of Trent. Of the twelve offertory prayers in the traditional Mass, only two are retained in the new Mass. The deleted offertory prayers are the same ones that the Protestant heretics Martin Luther and Thomas Cranmer eliminated. The new Mass was promulgated by Paul VI with the help of six Protestant ministers. We see them pictured here. Paul VI even admitted to his good friend Jean Guiton that his intention in changing the Mass was to make it Protestant. Jean Guiton, an intimate friend of Paul VI, wrote, quote, The intention of Paul VI with regard to what is commonly called the new Mass was to reform the Catholic liturgy in such a way that it should almost coincide with the Protestant liturgy. There was with Paul VI an ecumenical intention to remove, or at least to correct, or at least to relax what was too Catholic in the traditional sense in the Mass. And I repeat, to get the Catholic Mass closer to the Calvinist Mass. End quote. Thus, Paul VI removed what was too Catholic in the Mass, a study of the propers and orations of the traditional Mass versus the new Mass reveals a massacre of the traditional faith. The traditional Missal contains 1,182 orations. About 760 of those were dropped entirely from the new Mass. Of the approximately 36% which remained, the revisers altered over half of them before introducing them into the new Missal. Thus, only some 17% of the orations from the traditional Mass made it untouched into the new Mass. What's also striking is the content of the revisions that were made to the orations. Traditional orations which describe the following concepts were specifically abolished from the new Missal. The depravity of sin, the snares of wickedness, the grave offense of sin, the way to perdition, terror in the face of God's fury, God's anger, the divine majesty, our hardness of heart, infirmities of soul, our weak will, our languor of soul, the strength of our vices, concupiscence of the flesh and of the eyes, the blows of his wrath, the burden of evil, temptations, wicked thoughts, dangers to the soul, enemies of soul and body. Also eliminated were orations which described the hour of his death, the loss of heaven, everlasting death, eternal punishment, the pains of hell and its fires. Special emphasis was also made to abolish from the new mass orations which described detachment from the world, prayers for the departed, the true faith and the existence of heresy, the references to the church militant, the merits of the saints, miracles, and hell. One can see the results of this massacre of the traditional faith from the propers of the new mass. The new mass is fraught with sacrileges, profanations, and the most ridiculous abominations imaginable because it reflects a false religion which has abandoned the traditional Catholic faith. The false religion the new mass reflects is one reason why it is completely empty. It is why the fruits are utterly desolate, barren, and almost unspeakably bad. The religion practice at the churches where the new mass is said, simply put, is a complete sacrilege and an empty celebration of man. Even Dietrich von Hildebrand, a supporter of the Vatican II religion, said about the new mass, quote, Truly, if one of the devils in C.S. Lewis's The Screw Tape Letters had been entrusted with the ruin of the liturgy, he could not have done it better. With the exception of a single genuflection by the celebrant after the consecration, virtually every sign of respect for the body and blood of Christ, which characterized the traditional mass, has either been abolished or made optional for the new mass. It is no longer obligatory for the sacred vessels to be gilded if they are not made of precious metals. Sacred vessels which only the anointed hands of a priest could touch are now handled by all. The priest frequently shakes hands before distributing the host. The general instruction for the new mass also declares that altars no longer need to be made of natural stone that an altar stone containing the relics of martyrs is no longer required, that only one cloth is required on the altar, that it is not necessary to have a crucifix or even candles upon the altar. 
Not even one of the mandatory requirements developed over 2,000 years to ensure that the altar is of fitting dignity has been retained in the new Mass. When the Protestants split from the Catholic Church in England in the 16th century, they changed the Mass to reflect their heretical beliefs. The altars were replaced by tables, Latin was replaced by English, statues and icons were removed from the churches, the last gospel and the confiteor were abolished, communion was distributed in the hand, other changes were made, Mass was said out loud and facing the congregation, traditional music was discarded and replaced with new music, three quarters of the priests in England went along with the new service. But this is also precisely what happened in 1969, when Paul VI promulgated the new Mass, the Novus Ordo Missae. The similarities between the 1549 Anglican Prayer Book and the new Mass are striking. One expert noted, quote, The extent to which the Novus Ordo Mass departs from the theology of the Council of Trent can best be gauged by comparing the prayers which the Concilium removed from the liturgy to those removed by the heretic Thomas Cramner. The coincidence is not simply striking, it is horrifying. It cannot, in fact, be a coincidence. In order to emphasize their heretical belief that the Mass is not a sacrifice but just a meal, the Protestants removed the altar and put a table in its place. The chief Protestant heretics declared, quote, The form of a table shall more move the simple from the superstitious opinions of the Popish Mass unto the right use of the Lord's Supper, for the use of an altar is to make sacrifice upon it. The use of a table is to serve men to eat upon. The Welsh Catholic martyr Richard Gwynne declared in protest against this change, quote, In place of an altar there is a miserable table. In place of Christ there is bread. And St. Robert Bellarmine noted, quote, When we enter the temple of heretics, where there is nothing except a chair for preaching and a table for making a meal, we feel ourselves to be entering a profane hall and not the house of God. But just like the new services of the Protestant revolutionaries, the new Mass is celebrated on a table. The 1549 Anglican Prayer Book was also called, quote, the Supper of the Lord and the Holy Communion commonly called the Mass, end quote. This title emphasizes the Protestant belief that the Mass is just a meal, a supper, and not a sacrifice. When Paul VI promulgated the general instruction for the new Mass, it was entitled exactly the same way. It was entitled, quote, The Lord's Supper or Mass. Martin Luther said, quote, The Mass is not a sacrifice. Call it benediction, Eucharist, the Lord's table, the Lord's supper, memory of the Lord, or whatever you like, just so long as you do not dirty it with a name of sacrifice. The 1549 Anglican Prayer Book removed from the Mass the psalm Give judgment for me, O God. Because of its reference to the altar of God, this psalm was also suppressed in the new Mass. The 1549 Anglican Prayer Book removed from the Mass the prayer which begins, Take away from us our sins, because it evokes sacrifice. This was also suppressed in the new Mass. The prayer which begins, We beseech thee, O Lord, refers to relics in the altar stone. This has been suppressed in the new Mass. In the 1549 Anglican Prayer Book, the introit, Kyrie, Gloria, Collect, Epistle, Gospel, and Creed were all retained. They have all been retained in the New Mass. In the 1549 Anglican Prayer Book, the Lift Up Your Hearts Dialogue, Preface, and Sanctus were all retained. They have all been retained in the New Mass. It should also be noted that the Offertory Prayer in the New Mass, which begins, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation is taken from a Jewish table prayer. In the 1549 Anglican Prayer Book, the equivalent of the prayer which begins, May the mingling and consecration of the body and blood was abolished. It is very interesting that only a modified version of this prayer has been kept in the New Mass, with the important word consecration removed. The 1549 Anglican Prayer Book abandoned the discipline of the Roman Rite in distributing communion under one kind and gave communion under both kinds. At the New Mass, communion under both kinds is distributed in many places in the world. The 1552 version of the Anglican Prayer Book instructed that communion was to be given in the hand to signify that the bread was ordinary bread, and that the priest did not differ in essence from a layman. 
The new Mass gives communion in the hand in almost every place in the world, and it even goes further than Cramner by allowing communicants to stand and receive from a lay minister. The prayers in the traditional Mass which begin with, What has passed our lips as food, and may thy body, O Lord, which I have eaten, both make explicit reference to the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. Both have been suppressed in the new Mass. The prayer which begins, May the tribute of my worship be pleasing to thee, most holy trinity, was the least acceptable prayer after communion to all the Protestants because of its reference to propitiatory sacrifice. Martin Luther and Cramner, in his Anglican prayer book, suppressed it. Following their lead, it was suppressed in the new Mass. Now to the last gospel. If the last gospel which closes the traditional Mass had been included in the new Mass, then the new Mass would have clashed with the pattern of Protestant services, which conclude with a blessing. So it was not included in the new Mass. The prayers after the traditional Mass, the Leonine prayers, including the Hail Mary, the Hail Holy Queen, the O God Our Refuge, the prayer to St. Michael, and the appeal to the Sacred Heart, formed in practice an important part of the liturgy. Five prayers less compatible with Protestantism could hardly be imagined. They have all been suppressed in the new Mass. Considering all of this, even Michael Davies agreed, quote, It is beyond dispute that the Roman Rite has been destroyed. In the Novus Ordo Requiem Masses, the Mass for the Dead, the word soul is not even mentioned once. Besides the fact that the new Mass is a Protestant service, there is also the fact that the Novus Ordo churches bear a striking and undeniable resemblance to Freemasonic lodges. Look at the pictures. Here is a Freemasonic lodge, and here is a Novus Ordo church. The two are almost indistinguishable. The emphasis of both is on man, with a presider chair in the middle, with a circular emphasis. Perhaps this is because the primary architect of Paul VI's new mass was Cardinal Anaba Bugnini, who was a Freemason. Bugnini was the chairman of the concilium which drafted Paul VI's new mass. Bugnini was initiated into the Masonic Lodge on April 23, 1963, according to the Masonic Register in 1976. On March 19, 1965, Archbishop Bugnini stated, quote, We must strip from our Catholic prayers and from the Catholic liturgy everything which can be a stumbling block for our separated brethren, that is, for the Protestants. But the biggest problem with the new Mass is that it is not valid. Jesus Christ is not present in the new Mass because the new Mass has altered the very words of consecration. A sacrament is said to be valid if it takes place. The sacrament of the Eucharist is valid if the bread and wine become the actual body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. In order for any sacrament to be valid, matter, form, minister, and intention must be present. Pope Eugene IV, Council of Florence, 1439. All these sacraments are made up of three elements, namely, things as the matter, words as the form, and the person of the minister who confers the sacrament with the intention of doing what the church does. If any of these is lacking, the sacrament is not affected. The problem with the validity of the new Mass is with the form. Those words necessary to confect the sacrament of the Eucharist, the form necessary to confect the Eucharist in the Roman Rite, was declared by Pope Eugene IV at the Council of Florence. Pope Eugene IV, Council of Florence, 1441, quote, The Holy Roman Church, relying on the teaching and authority of the Apostles Peter and Paul, uses this form of words in the consecration of the Lord's body. For this is my body, and of his blood, for this is the chalice of my blood, of the new and eternal testament, the mystery of faith which shall be shed for you and for many, unto the remission of sins. In Pope St. Pius V's decree de defectibus, we find the same words repeated. Pope St. Pius V, De Defectibus, quote, The words of consecration which are the form of this sacrament are these, For this is my body, and for this is the chalice of my blood of the new and eternal testament, the mystery of faith, which shall be shed for you and for many unto the remission of sins. Now if one were to remove or change anything in the form of the consecration of the body and blood, and in that very change of words the new wording would fail to mean the same thing, 
he would not consecrate the sacrament. This teaching appeared in the front of every Roman altar missal from 1570 to 1962. The same words declared by the Council of Florence are declared necessary by Pope St. Pius V. This is why all of these words of consecration are bolded in the traditional Roman altar missals, and it is why the Roman Missal instructs priests to hold the chalice until the completion of all these words. Pope St. Pius V's teaching also states that if the words of consecration are changed so that the meaning is altered, the priest does not confect the sacrament. In the new Mass, the words of consecration have been drastically changed and the meaning has been altered. First, the original Latin version of the New Mass removed the words Mysterium Fide, the mystery of faith, from the words of consecration. This causes a grave doubt, because in the Roman Rite of Mass, these words are part of the form. Though the words Mysterium Fide are not part of some Eastern Rite formulas of consecration, they have been declared to be part of the Roman Rite and are also part of certain Eastern Rites. Pope Innocent III and the Canon of the Mass also tell us that the words Mysterium Fide were given by Jesus Christ himself. The words Mystery of Faith and the Consecration are a clear reference to the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. These words were also removed by the heretic Thomas Cramner in his 1549 Anglican prayer book because of their clear reference to the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. When heretics remove words from a rite which would contradict the intended meaning of the rite, a doubt is caused. The new Mass is evil because it claims to be the real Mass and is not. Thus, a Catholic cannot attend the new Mass under pain of mortal sin. Those who remain in it will lose their souls. Those who persist in attending this invalid service are committing idolatry and worshiping a piece of bread. Jesus Christ is not present there. The Novus Ordo host is merely a piece of bread, not our Lord's body, blood, soul, and divinity. The Church has always taught that to approach a doubtful sacrament, which employs doubtful matter or form, is mortally sinful. In fact, Pope Innocent XI decree the Holy Office March 4, 1679, even condemns the idea that Catholics can receive probable sacraments and the new Mass is not merely doubtful, it is clearly invalid. The new Mass is actually worse than a Protestant service. It is an abomination, which falsifies the words of Jesus Christ and the Catholic faith. This is why the fruits of the new Mass are so bad, so rotten, so evil, so destructive to the faith. The new Mass is strikingly similar to the service instituted by Cranmer, Following the Protestant Reformation, Pope St. Pius V told Catholics at that time that they were forbidden to attend such services. In fact, many went to their death rather than go to these churches where Cranmer's form of prayer was being said. If true Catholics went to their death rather than attend a Mass such as the Novus Ordo, the response of the faithful must be the same today. The New Rite of Ordination the new rite of holy orders was approved and imposed by Paul VI on June 18, 1968. The following information is absolutely critical for all Catholics to know, since it concerns the validity of basically every, quote, priest ordained within the diocesan structure since approximately 1968, and consequently it concerns the validity of countless confessions, indult masses, etc., in Paul VI's new rite of ordination, he removed one of the words, the word ut, from the form that was declared as being necessary for validity by Pope Pius XII in his Apostolic Constitution, Sacramentum Ordinis, November 30, 1947. This change by Paul VI introduces a doubt whether the new rite of ordination is valid. But the change of removing one of the words of the essential form is not the only problem with the new rite of ordination promulgated by Paul VI. The following points are just as significant, because the sacrament of holy orders, although instituted by our Lord Jesus Christ, was not instituted by our Lord with a specific sacramental form, so that the form of words in ordination is given its meaning and significance by the surrounding rite and ceremonies. In his famous bull Apostolicae Curie, September 13, 1896, 
Pope Leo XIII solemnly declared that the Anglican ordinations are invalid. This means that the Anglican sect does not have valid priests or bishops. Pope Leo XIII, Apostolice Curie, September 13, 1896. Quote, we pronounce and declare that ordinations carried out according to the Anglican rite have been and are absolutely null and utterly void. In making this solemn pronouncement, it must be understood that Leo XIII was not making Anglican ordinations invalid, but rather he was declaring that they were invalid due to defects in the rite. But what were those defects or problems which Pope Leo XIII saw with the Anglican rite of ordination? which contributed to its invalidity. Pope Leo XIII, Apostolice Curie, quote, For to put aside other reasons which show this to be insufficient for the purpose in the Anglican rite, let this argument suffice for all. From them has been deliberately removed whatever sets forth the dignity and office of the priesthood in the Catholic rite. That form consequently cannot be considered apt or sufficient for the sacrament, which omits what it ought essentially to signify. Pope Leo XIII, Apostolice Curie, quote, As the sacrament of orders and the true sacerdotium, sacrificing priesthood of Christ, were utterly eliminated from the Anglican rite, and hence the sacerdotium priesthood is in no wise conferred truly and validly. Pope Leo XIII, Apostolice Curie, quote, In the whole ordinal rite of ordination, not only is there no clear mention of the sacrifice of consecration of the sacerdotium sacrificing priesthood, but as we have just stated, every trace of these things which had been in such prayers of the Catholic rite, as they had not entirely rejected, was deliberately removed and struck out. In this way the native character, or spirit as it is called, of the ordinal clearly manifests itself. These things described by Pope Leo XIII as the downfall of the Anglican rite of ordination, the systematic removal of any mandatory references to the sacrifice of the Mass, consecration and the true sacrificing priesthood, are exactly the things that occurred in the new rite of ordination promulgated by Paul VI. In his book The Order of Melchizedek, Michael Davies is forced to admit the following, quote, Every prayer in the traditional rite of ordination which stated specifically the essential role of a priest as a man ordained to offer propitiatory sacrifice for the living and the dead, has been removed from the new rite of Paul VI. In most cases, these were the precise prayers removed by the Protestant reformers, or if not precisely the same, there are clear parallels. Quote, there is not one mandatory prayer in the new rite of ordination itself, which makes clear that the essence of the Catholic priesthood is the conferral of the powers to offer the sacrifice of the Mass and to absolve men of their sins, and that the sacrament imparts a character which differentiates a priest not simply in degree, but in essence from a layman. There is not a word in it that is incompatible with Protestant belief. Protestants were also consulted in the formulation of the new rite of ordination. Here are some of the specific prayers and ceremonies which set forth the true nature of the priesthood in the traditional rite, which have been specifically eliminated from the new rite of ordination of Paul VI. In the traditional rite, the bishop addresses the ordinands and says, quote, For it is a priest's duty to offer sacrifice, to bless, to lead, to preach, and to baptize. This admonition has been abolished. Later on, the bishop says this prayer, quote, Theirs be the task to change with blessing undefiled for the service of thy people, bread and wine into the body and blood of thy son. This prayer has been abolished. In the traditional rite, the bishop then intones a prayer, and anointing each priest, he says, quote, Be pleased, Lord, to consecrate and sanctify these hands by this anointing and our blessing, that whatsoever they bless may be blessed and whatsoever they consecrate may be consecrated and sanctified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This prayer has been abolished. And this prayer was so significant that it was even mentioned by Pius XII in Mediator Day No. 43. Quote, they alone, priests, have been marked with the indelible sign conforming them to Christ the priest, and that their hands alone have been consecrated, in order that whatever they bless may be blessed. Whatever they consecrate may become sacred and holy in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice that Pius XII, in speaking of how the priests have been marked in ordination, 
makes reference to this very important prayer, which was specifically abolished by Paul VI's new 1968 rite. Shortly after this prayer in the traditional rite, the bishop says to each man about to be ordained, quote, Receive the power to offer sacrifice to God, and to celebrate Mass both for the living and the dead in the name of the Lord. This exceptionally important prayer has been abolished in the new rite. At the end, the bishop lays both hands on the head of each and says, quote, Receive the Holy Ghost, whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven them, and whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. This ceremony and prayer have been abolished. Finally, before completing the Mass, the bishop imparts a blessing, quote, The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost come down upon you and make you blessed in the priestly order, enabling you to offer propitiatory sacrifices for the sins of the people to Almighty God. This blessing has been abolished. Conclusion It is totally obvious from these facts that there is no intention in the new rite of ordaining a true sacrificing priest. Every single mandatory reference to a true sacrificing priesthood was deliberately removed, just like in the Anglican rite, which was declared invalid for that very reason by Pope Leo XIII. Thus, the following words declared by Pope Leo XIII about the Anglican rite apply exactly to the new rite of Paul VI. Pope Leo XIII, Absolutia Curie, September 13, 1896, quote, For this reason in the whole ordinal, not only is there no clear mention of the sacrifice of consecration of the sacerdotium sacrificing priesthood, but as we have just stated, every trace of these things which had been in such prayers of the Catholic rite, as they had not entirely rejected, was deliberately removed and struck out. The new rite fits this description precisely. Could anyone deny this fact? No, to do so one would have to bear false witness. The new rite of ordination specifically eliminated the sacrificing priesthood. The intention it manifests is therefore contrary to the intention of the Church and cannot suffice for validity. It is also worth noting that Cranmer, in creating the invalid Anglican Rite, abolished the subdiaconate and minor orders and replaced them with a ministry in three degrees, bishops, priests, and deacons. This is also exactly what Paul VI did. Conclusion This means that any confessions made of grave sins to quote priests ordained in the June 18, 1968 New Rite of Ordination, used in Vatican II churches, must be confessed again to a validly ordained priest, who was ordained in the traditional rite of ordination, by a bishop consecrated in the traditional rite of Episcopal consecration. If one cannot remember which sins were confessed to New Rite quote priests, and which were forgiven by a priest ordained in the traditional rite, then a Catholic must make a general confession, mentioning all grave sins, if there were any, that may have been confessed to a, quote, priest ordained in the rite of Paul VI, the new rite. This also necessarily means that the Novus Ordo, the new Mass, without even considering its own problems which render it invalid, is of course invalid if celebrated by any, quote, priest, ordained in the new rite of ordination. The New Rite of Consecration of Bishops Now I will briefly discuss Paul VI's New Rite of Consecration of Bishops. This is also a very important issue, since groups like the Fraternity of St. Peter, the Institute of Christ the King, and the Society of St. John ordain their men in the traditional rite of ordination, but many times use, quote, bishops, who were made, quote, bishops in the new rite of Episcopal consecration. The form in the new rite of Paul VI for the consecration of bishops is radically different from that which was declared essential for validity by Pope Pius XII in Sacramentum Ordines. The two forms only have one thing in common, the single word et, which means end. In the new rite of Episcopal consecration, Basically, every reference to the specifically Catholic understanding of the episcopate has been deleted, just like in the new rite of ordination. In fact, there is not one unambiguous statement about the intended sacramental effect of episcopal consecration that can be found. In the traditional rite of consecration, the consecrator instructs the bishop-elect in the following terms, quote, 
A bishop judges, interprets, consecrates, ordains, offers, baptizes, and confirms. This has been abolished in the new rite. In the traditional rite, the bishop-to-be is asked to confirm his belief in each and every article of the creed. This has been abolished in the new rite. In the traditional rite, the bishop-to-be is asked if he will, quote, anathematize every heresy that shall arise against the Holy Catholic Church. This has been abolished in the new rite. In the traditional rite, the functions of a bishop are once again specified in these words, quote, whose sins he shall retain, let them be retained, and do thou remit the sins of whomsoever he shall remit. Grant him, O Lord, an Episcopal chair. This entire prayer has been abolished in the new rite. Conclusion Paul VI's new rite of Episcopal consecration has a radically different form from what Pius XII declared was necessary for validity. Thus, the new rite of Episcopal consecration cannot be considered valid. All, quote, priests ordained by such, quote, bishops consecrated in this new rite, even if the traditional rite of ordination was used, such as with most of the Fraternity of St. Peter Priests, Institute of Christ the King Priests, etc., cannot be considered valid priests. The New Rite of Confirmation The New Order of Confirmation was promulgated by Paul VI on August 15, 1971. The traditional form of confirmation has been fundamentally changed, and the matter of confirmation has also been changed. In Paul VI's New Rite of Confirmation, the traditional imposition of hands has been abolished, and other vegetable oils may replace olive oil, which was traditionally used. In the New Testament, the imposition of hands was always present in confirmation. See Acts 8 verse 17, Acts 19 verse 6. But there is no imposition of hands in the new rite of confirmation. It is abolished. This alone renders Paul VI's new rite of confirmation highly doubtful. Conclusion All changes considered, the validity of the new confirmation is highly doubtful. Extreme Unction The new rite of extreme unction was promulgated by Paul VI on November 30, 1972. The matter in the new rite has changed. Throughout the history of the Church, olive oil was the matter of the sacrament of extreme unction. In the new rite, however, instead of olive oil, any other vegetable oil may be used. The blessing has been changed. The Holy Ghost is no longer invoked. The traditional form of the sacrament has also been changed and now does not contain any unambiguous reference to the forgiveness of sins.